Hello again, my name's John. I'm a retired cook from the northeast of England in the UK and welcome to my latest bread video. And in this one, I'll show you how we make our jalapeno chilli and cheese bread. And if you can't get hold of jalapenos, any chilies would do. It's a simple no-need recipe and it's delicious and very easy to make. And once you do make it, I guarantee it won't be the last time. You can view the ingredients list and full written method for this recipe on the recipe page on the channel's website. I leave a link in the description under the video or you can click on the eye icon top right of the screen to take you directly to the recipe page. And I'd like to thank the Patreon and PayPal supporters for their very kind help. I'll be doing the shout out and name splash a little later in the video. OK, let's get on with today's recipe. Start by chopping your chilies into small pieces. Now I'm using jalapenos, but like I said in the intro, you can use any variety of chilies that you like. Hot, medium or mild. It's all down to your personal preference. And for a bit extra heat and flavour, you can also add all of the seeds too. Right, that's done. Now I'll set that aside for now. For the cheese, I'm using a good, mature or sharp cheddar. OK, I'll start the recipe by testing that the yeast is alive and well. First, I'll add a teaspoon of sugar to the warm water and mix until it dissolves. Then, I'll add my dried yeast. I'm using instant yeast, but you can use active or fresh yeast if you wish. If you're using fresh yeast, you'll need 20 grams. And I'll set that aside for 10 minutes until it foams up. Time to mix all of the dry ingredients together. First, the flour. Now, the finely chopped chilies. Next to go in is the cheese. And finally, the salt. Now give all of those dry ingredients a good mix. Form a well in the flour and add the active yeast mixture. And as you can see, mine has foamed up nicely, which means it's alive and very healthy. It's always best to test the yeast before you start any recipe. Now, like I said at the beginning, this is a no-need recipe. So, give it all a good mix until it all comes together into a sticky mass. I like to use my trusty wooden spoon handle for this. And to finish it off, use your bowl scraper as shown. You can use your stand mixer to do this initial mix, but it only takes 90 seconds to do by hand. Remember, this is a no-need recipe and you can overmix it, as we're trying to get the gluten strands to naturally form on their own. And I firmly believe that no-need recipes give better texture and taste to the bread. The downside is, it just takes a little longer. OK, now cover the bowl. I like to use the shower cap for this. Now get it into a nice warm spot. Now I like to use my oven with just the light bulb on. And set your timer for 45 minutes. And this is the first of three 45 minute proofs in the bowl. Right, that's the first proof done. Now turn it out onto a slightly wet surface. You won't see a big difference at this point. Now with wet hands, give the dough four or five turns as shown. You'll see the dough starting to become a lot smoother at this point. Now get it back into the bowl, cover it again and back into its warm spot for another 45 minutes for its second proof. OK, that's the second proof done. As you can see, it's risen quite a bit more this time. 
Now simply do the whole procedure again. Turn it out onto a wet surface. Give it four or five turns, making sure your hands are wet. Back into the bowl, cover the bowl with the shower cap again. By the way, these are available in two different colours in the website shop if you're interested. It's just another way you can support the channel. Now get the bowl back into its warm spot for its final 45 minute proof. Time to prepare one large or two small baking trays with a thin coat of oil, butter or shortening. The dimensions of the trays I'm using are on screen. Right, so far so good. Time to form these two loaves. Just before the proofing time's up, sprinkle a little flour over the bench as shown. Now turn up the dough onto the floured surface. And as you can see, the dough's looking wonderful this time. Sprinkle a little flour on the dough. Gently give it a few folds. Now if your measurements were correct at the start, your dough should weigh approximately 930 grams or just less than 39 ounces. Mine, as you can see, is 928 grams, so I'll simply divide that by two. Once you have your two equal dough pieces, form them into loaf shapes as shown. It's easier to watch how it's done rather than me trying to explain it. Once formed, nip the bottom seam together like I'm doing here. When both loaves have been formed, give them a little sprinkle of flour. Cover them with a lightweight dry cloth. Now I like to let them rest and relax for five minutes on the floured surface while I tidy up the worktop. After the five minutes are up, gently transfer them to the prepared baking trays. By the way, whenever I make this bread, I always make two. One we use straight away, the other we freeze for later. But I freeze as soon as it's cooled from the oven. That way it remains at its freshest when defrosted. Cover again with lightweight cloths. Now get them into a warm spot and allow them to rise for 40 minutes. Now I'm setting my timer for 30 minutes because when I take them out the oven, the oven needs 10 minutes to heat up, which is total 40 minutes. Right, my 30 minutes are up, so I let them sit on the bench for 10 minutes while the oven heats up. And as you can see, they're rising quite nicely. OK, when you have 10 minutes left on your last proof, preheat your oven to 210 degrees Celsius, that's 410 Fahrenheit, or gas mark in between 6 and 7. You'll also need to place a pan of water on the bottom shelf of your oven, as the steam produced will make the bread nice and crispy. OK, once your oven is up to temperature, it's time to score the dough. So score the dough in two or three gentle passes using a baker's lame like this one. And we also sell these in the website shop if you're interested. Now this is a pretty high hydration dough, 72% if you're interested. So 
take your time with this blade and gently nibble away at it. Once your two loaves have been scored, get them into the preheated oven. And for extra crispy bread, spray a little water into the oven too. Now set your timer for 20 minutes. And at this point I hope you don't mind if I give my two recipe books a bit of a plug. The books have lots of our favourite easy to follow recipes from our work kitchens in them. Both books are available in the website shop along with lots of other equipment I use in the videos. And by popular demand the skeleton style oven gloves are now available too. Just click on the eye icon top right of your screen and that will take you directly to the website shop. Ok, time's up. And they're looking great. And the smell is divine. Now you can leave them like that or you can take them to another level. I like to add a little extra cheese to the top of the loaves. And for a little contrast in colour, I add a little red cheese to the mix. In this case, a little red Leicester. Now I place them back in the oven without the tray this time for an extra five minutes so they crisp up even more and that scrumptious cheese topping melts. Right, like I said, I'll give those another five minutes. Okay, time's up. And they're looking fantastic. Now I'll get them on a wire rack and let them cool for 15 minutes. And then I'll come back and let you see what they're like on the inside. In the meantime, just listen to how crispy they are. OK, they've cooled down enough now to give them a try. So I've cut a couple of slices off. And that crust sounds amazing. The crumb inside looks light, soft and airy with those chilli flecks of colour scattered about. OK, I'll try a piece with some of my homemade butter. And it tastes absolutely delicious. You don't feel the heat at first, but then you get a warm, comfortable feeling from those chillies, mixed with the toasted cheese flavour. An absolutely fantastic bread. You'll definitely give this one a big thumbs up if you try it. And as promised at the beginning, here is the latest list of my Patreon and PayPal supporters. And they are Lynn Francis Clock, Mary Clark, Robert Harris, Adrian Biles, Floyd Mance, Nithya Gogte, Marilyn McNamara, Katie Smith, Pete Ely, Sandra Oss and Carolyn Thompson. Thanks very much guys, I really do appreciate all that you do in supporting the channel. Well thank you again for watching, please like, share, comment and subscribe by hitting the circle above. If you do subscribe, activate the bell icon next to the subscribe button on my channel page. And by doing that you'll be automatically notified every time I upload a new video. And in the meantime, here's a few of my other videos and playlists that you may want to watch. So until the next time, be safe in your kitchen and bye for now.